from lazy modding on our placeable series. I realize it has been a hot minute uh, since I have done anything with this, and I do apologize for that. It's just been uh, really busy, and I just haven't had a whole lot of time to sit down and put together videos and stuff like that. So um, I figured just to try to get back in the swing of things, I might as well do this. I'm sure people are kind of waiting on it. So um, anyway, uh, we are going to work with our metal today. So um, right now we have our steel frame. I will try to uh, leave a video somewhere here on the screen for uh, if you haven't watched previously. So, um, But the first thing we're going to do here is actually... Um, gee, Merry Christmas. Oh, okay, there we go. My shift button was not working for some reason. So um, we're actually going to go here and go... Since we're only going to do outside metal, um, we're going to go here and do mesh and we're going to create a cube so it's going to create this little cube down here and what generally size i go with is so on our y-axis we need it to be four feet and on our zxl actually y is the only one that actually matters and then um, or x or the depth of the metal i generally just go 0 0.125 or an eighth of an inch and then you can either put the double quotes or just type in in and it'll convert it to an inch or a foot excuse me and then we have technically a sheet of metal there so then what i generally do is i go ahead and make the x direction four feet as well i'm gonna go uh control a and then rotation and scale lock so that's just gonna make the scale exactly one and then i'm gonna tab into edit mode and then hit alt x to see everything we're going to select edges and what we're going to do is try to get both of these bottom edges here and i'm going to go shift s2 it's going to put that right there we're going to right click on it and go set origin origin 3d cursor and then we're going to tab and then so that's going to move the origin or the control point of this really thin cube to uh, the bottom edge and the reason i do that is so when we tab into here i can go shift s2 to put the cursor there I'm right click that and right click it and then go to selection to cursor and it's going to snap it to the cursor and then we'll just hit our x-axis to get an idea of where we sit x-wise and we're just going to kind of line it up with the edge there. So um, that is kind of our metal plane there. Um, I'm going to do this in a two-tone uh, color, so there'll be two different metals. So we're just going to go and add a new material, and we're going to name it Metal 1. So we already have that done. And then what I'm going to do to make it just um, a little bit easier is I'm going to wait to create anything second. And then now what I'm going to do is go and actually we'll go to, uh, if you go up here to your top bar, you should be able to see the shading. If you click that, it should take you to something that looks a little bit like this. So what we really need is to add metal textures to this, met or to this cube that allows us to have it look like it's 3D metal, but without it being 3D metal. That way, so then the poly count of the overall mod is a lot lower, and therefore the performance related to the mod is a lot better. Um, back in FS19 to FS early FS22, I did a lot of 3D metal, and I am glad I actually got away from it. So uh, it looks good-ish, but just the way the game kind of works, it starts the images. If you can map it out with normal mapping, right, it looks a lot better. So um, that's what we are going to try to do here. So um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and navigate to my W drive and go modding folder. So that's going to bring up my modding folder. And then we're going to go FS22, assets, buildings, metal. And then we're going to be using these uh, the PNG files here. So... 
I only actually apply the normal in Blender. I wait until I get into GE to put the spec map on, just because sometimes the channels aren't right for it to work correctly. So I just figured out that's an easier way not to mess anything up. So, um, so I have these pulled up here, and I will try to remember to upload these um, to where you guys can use them if you need it, or you can always go to one of my mods and pull them from there. So I use pretty much the same textures on every mod. So um, now that we have that done, what we're going to do is go up here to Add, or you can use Shift A. We're going to go to Search, and we're going to go Normal Map. So we're just going to place this right here, and then, so this normal spot here, we are actually going to take this and slide it to the normal, or purple to purple. And then we're also going to go back to Shift A, search, go image, texture, and we're going to place that right there. Alpha will go to there. Color will go to there. And then we're just going to get our metal underscore normal PNG. Actually, you can just drag it on. I kind of forgot it does that. Um, so we'll just put that there, and then we'll run our alpha to there, and our color to there. So, and as you can see, now it popped up on here. So we have that material basically set up. Um, and then if you want to change the color of it, so I want our accent color to be black, or actually we'll go red. I'm a big fan of red and white buildings, so we'll just go red here. Um, just gonna make a more of a vibrant red and just dim it just a little there. Okay, so that's what's gonna give us our color there. So you can control that by that, or you should be able to do it in your uh, base color over here as well. But this is definitely the easiest way of adding um, a normal map to the mod or to uh, a texture or a shape. Geez, I cannot talk today. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, to layout, and then we're just going to look at it and then tap into edit mode. Um, you can hit three on your keyboard. Oh, generally you can hit three. There it goes. Um, or you can just click the faces up here. And I'm going to hit Alt-Z. That gets us out of the x-ray mode. So I'm going to select this face. I'm going to go to UV, and then just straight up unwrap it. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back. UV unwrap. So what that's going to do is it's going to unwrap the mod to where the faces are exactly the same size as that normal map. So then if we go to UV editing here, um, we'll zoom out of this. And then we're just going to select because as you can see in the earlier thing, it was kind of like um, it's like disoriented or it's rotating 90 degrees. So what we're going to do is actually um, rotate them. So if you select the two faces over here in your edit mode, they should also select over here into your UV edit mode. But if they don't, select these two bypassing arrows and they will uh, like allow it to sync or something. I'm not sure what the actual terminology is. UV sync selection, so I guess I got it right. But once you have that selected, if you hit um, R on your keyboard will bring up the rotate tool and you can just type in 90 degrees and that will rotate those UV maps 90 degrees and then now our object is oriented right. So um, if you're going to do inside uh, like inside textures or inside metal etc I do recommend doing a pain a plane on the outside and a plane on the inside. What that does is it just allows you to have less poly because it's only singular faces instead of doubled up. So um, it's the same process. You just have to do it with one face and there's no extra sides. So um, what I'm actually going to do with the sides is I'm going to actually select them in here and they're also select here and I'm going to hit X and I'm just going to delete the faces. Um, I don't really ever use the faces, honestly, on the sides. If you do your buildings right, they should be covered up by the trim. So um, I did notice that it's a little off here. So we're just going to kind of move it this way just a little bit. So 
it's not sitting on the metal, but it's pretty close. So um, anyway, so that is what we're going to do there. And then we're just going to take this. Actually, I like four feet. It's actually a decent height. Um, so then to get our different one, what I'm going to do is go and hit Shift D. And it's going to duplicate it. And then we're going to go here and move just this up about where we need it. And then you should have this move uh, UI that pops up in the corner and under the Z if you just put in four it'll line it right up at the top of the other one and then if you want to go and uh, you can go over here and duplicate at least you used to be able to duplicate okay there we go we duplicated it so now we have two metals so I'm just going to here we're going to name this metal oops underscore two and then we're going to make this white. So that's going to make it that way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to extend this, the height of it here under the Z category till it's over the top of the highest point. Jeez, I cannot navigate very well today. So we're just going to take it up to right about there. It doesn't have to be perfect. What that does is it allows us to be able to array it across of the front here and just allows it to be easier when it comes to cutting everything out. So that's what we're going to do right there. And then um, now that we have that done, we're just going to go back in here, go Control A, Rotation and Scale. Right? So then it's still the same size. And then if you ever have an issue with where things look weird, I do highly recommend to check your face orientation. So it looks like we have a couple issues here on face orientation, but I'll fix those off camera here. Um, actually, I can fix one. But so basically these faces are facing the wrong way. So, so what we're going to do is I'm going to select that and then we're just going to tab into edit mode and then... Um, We'll see if it can actually fix itself. So you'll hit A to select everything. You go to Mesh Normals and recalculate outside. And it looks to fix that issue, but it didn't get... Oh, we're just completely missing a face. Okay. That's great. Okay. Oh. Anyway, most of the time that works. If it doesn't, what you can do is I'll just undo what I did there. Okay, so um, if in case just recalculating outside doesn't work, what you can do is select the faces just like that and then go to Mesh, Normals, and just hit Flip. And then if it's blue or purple, then it's oriented the right way, basically. So you don't want any red that's going to be facing towards you, basically. So, um, but anyway, uh, the quickest way to do it is just if you hit A and then just Mesh, normals and then recalculate outside it allows um, blender to figure it out so you don't have to do it on every face but if you ever have an issue like this you can just select that 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 and that and hit f and i'll fill that face in for you so um, i'll fix the other ones here at some point so that is kind of how you do it um I do recommend turning this off though because it does get rather annoying pretty quick um, with everything being purple. So anyway, so now that we have that up there. What we're going to do is go and I generally try to leave the two different colors separate until like I need to actually mesh them together um, just because it makes it a little bit easier. But generally what I can do is I'll slide these all the way over to the edge here. Uh, sort of about like that just where it's just right on the edge enough to if when you model up your corner trim that it covers it so and then generally what i do is i will just select one but uh, you know what we might just see what happens here so i'm gonna go to modifier and search and then uh, this might look a little bit different if you're using like 3.9 version of blender i am using 4.1 at the moment so things might be a little bit different. Everything should relatively be the same, but you never know. So, um, And then generally whenever you use the union 
uh, boolean modifier, it'll leave behind the original uh, object that was meshed together. So that's what it did here. So I'm just going to slide it out here. And I'm going to hit H to hide it. And then we're going to fix this real quick. And we're going to flip our these faces back to the material they need to be. So I'm going to just select those. And then we're going to go here. And so this is what needs to be metal two. So we're just going to go here and hit plus, select metal two. And we're just going to click assign. So that just assigns a different material to that face. So as you can see, it literally looks like it's just a sheet of metal just painted differently. So, um, but that allows us to basically have one mesh. I wasn't sure how that was going to work. So that's why I was a bit hesitant there, but it worked well. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back to our modifiers tab or the gear wrench and hit modifier, search it. And it's going to be array and hit enter. And then we're going to be arraying positively on the y-axis by a factor of one. Um, and then we're just going to set the factor x axis to zero because we don't need any in the x direction. So that's going to basically multiply each of it down by four feet. So we're just going to increase our uh, count here uh, till it gets all the way across. How much is that? Oh, we'll show you guys the good way to do this. So, um, so there will be 22 uh, sheets of metal across. So before I hit apply, though, I'm actually going to go and duplicate this as well and slide it back here and hit hide as well. That way, so whenever we get to do something else, we don't have to recreate that again. So all um, it is a very good practice to be able, especially with metal, like if you go and create a size or a material just to have an extra one, it doesn't have to be visible, but just have it like sitting around the project until you're done with it. That way, so you don't have to like recreate the process every time. So that's what we're going to do there. So that's duplicated. I'm just going to go and hit apply. So that is now um, fully a wall of metal. So um, the next thing we're going to do is go and actually cut this door out. So I'm going to get rid of these back beams here. I want to get rid of the middle beam. That way, so then it's just a clear shot of this door right here. So um, the origin cursor is still already there. So we're just going to go to add a cube. And then we'll go back to our x axis and we're going to scale our y to go S S Y. And then we're just going to make it just about as wide as the door. So I think the door is about 29.5. So that works out well. And then we're just going to kind of leave that there. And then what we're going to do is tilt up a little bit. And then we're going to select that top face and we're just going to carry that upward. That way, so then uh, we don't have to try to like expand it. And then we're just going to take it just right to the edge there. Um, and basically what we're going to do is use this cube to cut this metal out. So you don't want it to be flush on the bottoms because sometimes that can give you an issue. So I generally just recommend just extending it just below where the metal stops. That way, so then it's just going to be a clear cut and not have to deal with later trying to compute edges. So it doesn't always end good. So um, before you cut, though, make sure you go Control A and Rotation and Scale. I already did that. So that's going to give us a good cube to cut with. So then what we're going to do is select this wall. We're going to go to Add Modifier, Search. We're going to go back to our Boolean modifier. And you want to be under the difference. So um, Object-wise, you're going to click this little eyedropper icon, and we're just going to select the cube. And then sometimes it works. Actually, what we need to do is, I completely forgot about this. Um, so before you do all that, so just act like I didn't do that. Uh, go into edit mode, hit A to select all, and then go to mesh, clean up, and merge by distance. So what that's going to do is there's going to be a lot of extra vertices from arraying this down. If you're able to do that, then it merges all those vertices into one. So you don't have so many uh, vertices left. So one thing I do want to make sure, though, is it 
didn't just combine the two faces and it did not so that worked out good um most of the time it works out pretty good but sometimes you have to like double check since sometimes it does wonky things um which could just be on me honestly but anyway so now that that's done we're gonna go back add our modifier boolean difference okay and then now you guys finally seen that cut because earlier when we did that it didn't cut i'm assuming that's probably a vertice issue so um, but you can see the green outline around here where it shows that the mesh is cut. Um, try to use exact as much as you can. It's just a much better solver than just fast. So um, if you have issues with exact, you can use fast. It just won't be as clean of a mesh. So, um, But once you have that done, you can just go and hit apply. Um, you can probably just hide that door, but if you're going to render it, uh, make sure you hit both the eye icon and the camera icon because it will hide it from the render. So that is now that door cut out. And that's how you do the process of any walkthrough doors, windows, etc. Stuff like that. That's how I do it anyway. Um, I think it's just easy to do it that way. So, And then um, we do have now our roof line to get done. So... What I generally actually try to do is, I've been trying to get a little bit smarter at this, if I'm being dead honest. Um, so what I generally try to do is select that face right there, and then I hit Shift D to duplicate it, and then P to separate it, and I'll s separate by selection. Apologies for that. Uh, sometimes my mic goes a little weird on my headset, so I don't actually have my actual setup with me at the moment. So uh, we're just trying to get through what we can here. So once that's separated, you can just tab out of it, and then you'll have this mesh right here alone that you can use. And then generally what you can do is actually go to Add Modifier, Search, and then we're going to find, I believe it's Mesh. Maybe not. Uh, solidify. So basically what that's going to do is it's going to take a plane and make it into like a 3D object actually. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, that way so then we have top and bottom faces. So it looks like it's already done that for us. Um, basically you just want to make sure that it's not leaving a weird gap or anything. So once you do that, uh, you don't have to worry about the thickness. All it does is, you know, increase the actual thickness of it. But we're going to do that anyway. So, uh, you know, hit, hit apply. And then we're just going to tap out of it. And then we're going to select all these faces. And then we're just going to hit E to extrude. And move it upwards just till it clears all of the metal. Booyah. Looks amazing. And then also what we're going to do is go here and we are going to extend this outwards. So hit E and just pull it outwards. Um, and then we're just going to hit E again, but don't pull it outwards. You want to hit E and then click off and then just pull it down. So what that's going to do is it's going to give you a flat edge along this side of this post to line it up perfectly and then just take that below the metal and then this is where it gets a little bit more tricky but what I, you can generally do is um, select this face go there and click that just drag it out to here and then select that edge and that edge and hit F and then I'll create a face right there but sometimes that doesn't really cut right so I think we're just gonna leave it and I'll show you guys kind of what I end up doing quite a bit so so we'll just leave that there um, we don't have to do it on this side because it's lined up but now we have that done what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slide it forward till the metal is inside that looks good so then we're just gonna select the metal uh, actually we're gonna make sure sure scale set make sure I always got to make sure of that because if it's not then it can really mess some things up so um, 
we're going to select the metal, go to add modifier, search boolean, union, or difference, my bad. And then click the eyedropper icon and select the metal. And once again, you can see the green outline of the object that stays. And then just hit A to apply object. Um, since we still have to do the back, I recommend keeping this. Just once again, just kind of slide it out and you can hide it because that gives you perfect dimensions of this you know the beams all the way around pretty much so you're probably wondering but like this is still left so it's pretty easy to get rid of it so if you select that and then just tab into your edit mode we're just going to click our face icon do that hit Control l just make sure everything's selected do the same thing on the back hit x and delete your face and just like that that face is deleted um, a good thing to do is just to make sure to go back in here, select everything, mesh, clean up, and then uh, merge by distance. And then uh, sometimes there can be little weird issues that happen. So if you delete loose, um, if you have like a random vertice that's just hanging out in the middle of nowhere, that delete loose will take care of that. So anyway that is kind of how you do that um i will probably try to do a another video of how i do the rest of it i just don't have a ton of time to sit down and do like an hour long video unfortunately so um hopefully this helps that covered most of the basics on doing the metal on the sides i will try to post a link um to metal and stuff in the comment or in the description if i don't do that someone please remind me um like I said, I, I've been under pretty busy and under quite a bit of stress, so um, I do apologize for the lack of videos. So um, anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video and it helped, please do uh, consider giving it a like and hit the subscribe button. Um, if you guys have any questions, comments, or other video ideas, please do leave a comment in that. Um, if you guys don't mind, also do share. I know these videos aren't the most spectacular thing, you know, they're nothing compared to, you know, awesome gameplay videos by other people. But I really hope that these can actually help. And hopefully in the future at some point inspire, you know, the next generation of modders for farm sim. So anyway, with that, I am going to get off of here and get this video edited and hopefully turned out. And we will catch you all next time. Have a good one.